Good morning there. My name is Belinda Weaver. I am a copy coach and each week I'm going live answering questions that I have received in my free Facebook group for the love of copy, in my private coaching group, Confident Copywriting, questions that I think maybe you've asked at one time or another and I wanted to share my thoughts. So today I wanted to talk about a question that I got recently which is should you skip the deposit on small copywriting projects. A new copywriter has been getting their first few clients and was making progress during through the project admin. And it was quite a small project. And so they wondered whether they shouldn't just skip the 50% deposit and just invoice at the end because it seemed a lot of hassle. And the business they were working with are also quite small. So I want to back up for a second and just quickly run through the commencement admin for every copywriting project. So first, you have a chat with a prospective client. You find out what they want, you find out what they need, and you agree a price. And so that might be um, over email where you throw out a ballpark figure, you ask if that's in their budget, they say, yeah, that sounds great. And you say, the next step is for me to go ahead and put a proposal together. So it's a good idea to kind of throw some numbers out early so that you avoid that kind of like <gasps> reaction from a prospective client. You want to know that they're not looking for bargain basement prices for your copywriting service. So you agree a ballpark price in the conversation, the next step is to agree the scope and the price in writing. That's where your proposal comes in. Whether you've had a chat over email, you've had a more formal discovery call, you do want to get the whole thing in writing. You want to get the scope, you want to get the inclusions, you want to get your terms of service in writing, and you want to have the price there as well. And then you want to get them to agree to that in writing. Now, whether you use a fancy proposal tool or whether you'll accept an email, that's completely up to you. I always like to take the easy route, but as long as you get the agreement to the proposal in writing and you make sure that they've read all the details, you're sweet. The next step is to send them a 50% deposit. I like to call this a commencement invoice. Got this phrasing from the freelance jungle on Facebook run by Beck Lambert in Australia. And I think it's brilliant because it's not really a deposit. It's the money a client pays to lock their project into your schedule. And until it's paid, that project is just a maybe. Until that invoice is paid, nothing is locked in your calendar. You have no time set aside and another client could theoretically come along and book into your calendar. So that's why I love this term commencement invoice. It's the invoice you pay to start the project. Now, the question was, should I just skip it because they're a really small business and it's a really small project? The answer is hell no. Always follow your process, every single step, even if it adds up to a little bit of extra admin, because here's the reason why. Without an invoice paid, the client isn't as committed to the project. And if you are already clocking billable hours, at any point, the client could cancel and all that work goes up into smoke. Even if they've agreed to the proposal in writing, until they have paid you some money, you are effectively working for free. And here's what I know from my own personal experience. Every time I have skipped the commencement invoice and started working, the project has gone tits up. Now, sometimes I've skipped it because it seemed too much hassle and it was a really small project. Sometimes I've skipped it because the client was in a hurry. Sometimes I've skipped it because I was just too damn excited to get started and the client was in a hurry, right? So all those reasons could be why you think, oh, I won't worry about it this time. I'm sure they're good for it. But as soon as you deviate from your process, from these major parts of the process, the agreement in writing, the commencement invoice, the copywriting brief approval, and the copy approval at the end of the project, when you deviate from those steps in your process, you are leaving yourself wide open for the project to go terribly wrong. 
And that's not what you want. It's a headache for everyone. As the copywriting lead on your own project, it is your job to guide your client through your process and stick to it. This protects you and it protects them. It's a win for everyone. And what it means is that if something were to go wrong with the project, you have at least 50% of the funds to cover the work that you might already have done. And so even if it seems like a lot of admin, follow your process, get that commencement invoice paid before you block out time in your calendar, before you start researching, before you start writing. It's really, really important. Now, that isn't to say that you can't be flexible within your process, right? It's important to be flexible and adaptable to the circumstances and not be too rigid, but there are some milestones that need to be absolutely firm because they protect you and they protect your client. I hope this has helped you with your process, your copywriting project onboarding. It's important to have all the steps mapped out. This is how you start developing your systems. When you follow the same steps every time, you deliver a repeatably awesome service, you give your clients security, you give yourself some freedom in your brain because you're not making it up as you go along and you're not carrying around lists in your head. That's the kind of service experience that you can charge a premium for. And it all starts with having a system and absolutely sticking to it. So my name is Belinda Weaver, I'm a copy coach. If you have questions about copywriting, being a copywriter, copywriting processes, do ask me. You can ask me on Facebook, you can ask me on Instagram, you can ask me in my free Facebook group, and I will answer one every single week. That's it for me for now. I hope you have an amazing weekend.